Uh, Timmy's is, is quite an unusual company uh, in what it has done. And I hope that you enjoy this today because uh, other than the original history part that I'm going to be telling you about, I was fortunate enough to be part of it. I'm not one of these guys that stands up here with bar graphs and pie charts. If you want to see bar graphs and pie charts, take a look at the floor. It's got enough scribbles on it. That'll work. But don't ask me to do it because I'm going to tell you about real things and real people about it. One thing I wanted to point out to you is that this picture that you see, I really don't have three chins, okay? <laughs> this was taken by the Globe and Mail some years ago and was used in their paper, and it's, a, it's the picture that's on the cover of my book. And uh, he was shooting it way down low, you know, and looking up to get the picture of the logo in the background. So I didn't realize I'd come up like that, but the hell with airbrushing. Now, anyway. <laughs> I did write a book, it's called Tales from Under the Rim, so let's right off the bat find out who's got a birthday closest to mine, August 14. Oh, you're quick, congratulations. I'll sign it for you afterwards, okay? <laughs> you better than her with you too, or she's going to beat you. She is beating you with that thing. Boy, I'm not going to get near that line. Anyway, we're going to be talking about this company. And we're going to be talking about uh, how it got started, what's going on with it. And of course it starts out with a, with a, a man himself, and that is, as soon as we get this thing to work, hang on a second, there it goes, yeah, well somebody hits buttons on these things. Don't ask me about computers, I wrote a book on it, but anything that you've got to push start to stop is not my idea of fun. <laughs> His name is Miles Gilbert Horton. His nickname was Timmy, and he played for Toronto, and he ended up playing for Buffalo before the end of his career, when he was killed in 1974. The thing that hurts me most is that this picture was taken with his uh, cohort, Johnny Bauer and Yvonne Cormoyer, in 1967. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last year that Toronto won the Stanley Cup. <laughs> what does this tell you? Next year. <laughs> what? We need a resurrection of them. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. Anyway, Timmy had a lot going for him, but in those days he did not have pension plans. And he worried about his future and about his money. Things would change because there would be four factors in the development of Tim Hortons. One hockey player, one ex-drummer, one barber shop, and one police officer. Now the ex-drummer is this gentleman that you see here in the white, in the, in the trench coat. His name is Jim Charade. Jim passed away this year, but I got the pleasure of meeting him and talking to him. And Jimmy had a little donut shop called Your Donuts, and it was in conjunction with a company called Vachon. And if you're from Quebec, anybody? Yeah, yeah. Joe Louis? Same one? They had the, uh, uh, the Vachon. The, the Vachon people wanted to get into the English market, but they couldn't speak any English at all. And Jimmy was told he bilingual coming from Montreal, so he took on the task. And he opened up as a sidebar a little donut shop called Your Donuts, and it was right next to a barber shop. And it was one that Timmy frequented. So he got to know this man, know him rather well. Now, Jim Charade had an interesting characteristic, and that was that he worked in the United States, and he'd seen how the Americans work, and if anybody can promote it, it's the Americans. Uh, the best of them all, I think, is, is Disney Corporation. They are remarkable people in what they do uh, and, and how they work. In fact, I, uh, one of the things that I did by handing out the book, I learned from a presentation they did down there when I was in Disney World for a business meeting, and they would hand out little figures of Mickey Mouse and Goofy and all these, and people treasured those darn things. Look what I got! I answered the question right! That was great. So these people really know what they're doing. Jimmy had seen in the United States when he was in the food business that professional athletes were great draws for entertainment, great draws for opening of restaurants. So he talked to Tim and they decided that they would give it a try. Do you know what they tried with first? Do you know what the first food product was? Hmm? Hamburgers. Hamburgers. Who said hamburgers? How'd you know that? And this is where the location was. One of them, there were half a dozen of them that were open. 
and this particular one was in North Bay, Ontario. And uh, I've spoken in North Bay, and I was quite interested in the fact that this was well remembered. People remembered this, this uh, hamburger location. But the reason it's here is not to talk just about down memory lane, but you find that everything I'm going to talk about is related to today's business world. And this particular location I'm going to show you was built right beside and in the lot of a service station, a Shell service station. It was owned by Timmy's dad, Oakley, and his brother, Jerry. And they owned this, so they had property available, and they put this... Am I blocking your view? Oh, it's nice on that pen, am I? Good. Okay. <laughs> um, they, they, put this, they put this chalet affair here on the, on the parking lot, and what they did was, uh, they, it was automatically triggering in. They were, they were winning the world here without realizing it as much. Because what they had were things that were going to be going into Tim Horton Donut Shops. For example, a parking area right in front of the door, so you could drive right up easy access. A service station. Many of the original stores were built in old service stations. The picture that I'm going to show you of the original store was a service station. And this was before uh, all the green stuff and people worrying about the, the oil in the ground and everything. So what the hell, we had a lot of people who were going to burn, I guess, from eating oil from donuts, but it worked. Anyway, this particular uh, location that had some other things going for it. I told you about the parking, the service station. But take a look at what happens here. And Tim was a shy man. He was, he was very conservative. And he didn't believe in the great I am. He didn't like the word I. He liked the word we. And if you take a look at it, you'll understand what I'm saying. First of all, we had the, the biggest references is number, number seven. But not Tim Hortons. And you've got hamburgers because they ran out of room, but they could spell hamburgers down here, so I don't know. <laughs> Did you catch up with that one? Hamburgers, hamburgers, and hot dogs, and charcoal broiled, and we were open. And oh, by the way, it's Tim Horton. So this is, gives you an idea about the thinking and some of the things that were going on with that uh, organization. And ideas that they would pick up and use in the donut shop business as it would come down the line. And I promise I'm going to look at this thing more carefully so that I don't uh, waste too much of your time. My script, that is. Anyway, the hamburger business was highly competitive. And they thought, that maybe we'll give it a try with donuts. So what they did was, they got into the donut business, and they had some locations in Toronto, which were hamburgers. But instead of converting them, they went into another smaller city. And the smaller city was? Hamilton. Hamilton, Ontario. And this is, sorry, this is the first location. It's rather an irony that this picture is here. Uh, the construction department told me in 1979, we're going to tear down the original store. If you want to take a picture of it, you better go today. Which I did. I drove out to Hamilton to take this picture. And it's the only one they have in existence. It's all over the place, and I wish I got a royalty on it. But... Uh, this is the original location, and it was an old super test service station in Hamilton, Ontario. And the story goes, the fellow who owned it was in Kitchener, and he used to pedal his bicycle to Hamilton every once in a while. If you buy that, okay. Anyway, the thing that's interesting is to take a look at it. This, is, this actually was my car here, but I got one, two, three, four, five. We could maybe put eight cars in here on a slow day in a drive through that's what you would have, but that was all the parking that they had for it. The sign is quite interesting because this was a rotating sign. So on one side it said donuts, open fresh coffee seven days a week. On the other side it said Tim Horton, and down here on the other side it said pies. Yeah, they had pies. Initially they had pies and they had ice cream, two things they got out of which you're going back into, of course, now.